is the Xperia 1 Mark V, Sony's new camera-centric flagship phone. We've seen some great camera phones come out lately, so how does this year's Xperia 1 match up? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. The Xperia 1 Mark V is Sony's top camera phone, and it looks to provide significant upgrades over the previous model. And upgrades are necessary to keep up with the competition, who have raised the bar with main cameras that feature a huge, 1-inch type Sony IMX989 sensor. That's the largest sensor available on a smartphone right now, but for some reason Sony has opted to use a different sensor instead. Here they've gone with a new CMOS sensor, the IMX888. That's not as big as the IMX989, but still almost twice as large as the sensor in the Xperia 1 Mark IV. It also brings an innovative stacked design. The photodiodes and transistors are separated onto different layers, instead of sitting one next to the other. This allows for larger photodiodes, for much improved light gathering capabilities, and also better transistors which should reduce noise. Besides the new main cam, the Xperia 1 Mark V also packs a new chipset, and an upgraded pair of speakers. The design has been refreshed too. While the phone is again squared off, tall and narrow, the Gorilla Glass Victus back feels quite different than before. And that's because it has a fine, bumpy texture to it that lends some extra grip. You also get a ribbed texture on the aluminum frame, something they've carried over from the Xperia Pro i. The new design has to be one of our favorite features of this phone, and it makes it much grippier and easier to wield than any of the others out there. And of course you again get ingress protection here, and it's rated at IP65 slash IP68. Like previous Xperia phones, you get a dedicated two-step shutter button for the cameras. But something new on the Mark V is that there's a mic on the backside now that's more directional, so it can pick up voices better. The display of the phone is a 6.5-inch OLED with a 4K resolution, a 120Hz refresh rate, Victus 2 protection, and a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. This is great for consuming cinematic content, but when using the phone vertically, it feels rather tall and narrow. Just like on the previous models, the 4K resolution isn't always active. Instead, most of the things are rendered in 1080p to save energy. The full 4K is used primarily in multimedia apps such as photos, or video playback and streaming across different services. And at 643 ppi, this content looks extra sharp. The Mark V also supports 10-bit color in HDR10 video, but not Dolby Vision. This display is plenty bright. We measured up to 590 nits maximum with the manual slider, and about 940 nits with a sunlight auto brightness boost. Actually, the max brightness is dependent on the color settings. It's the highest in the creator mode, with the default white balance. There are plenty of options, and you can achieve great color accuracy. You don't get a lot for refresh rate options though, only to enable or disable the high refresh rate mode. When it's on, the display will stick to 120Hz, even when idling, except for frame rate specific content and apps. Something you don't often find on flagships is expandable storage through microSD, but you still get that here, on top of the 256 gigs on board. And another rare feature you get on the Xperia 1 Mark V is a 3.5mm jack for headphones. Besides headphones, there's a pair of front-facing stereo speakers, now upgraded with a new amplifier for fuller sound. They have very good loudness, and the sound is quite rich, from bass to vocals, all the way to the higher frequencies. Awake, but you're I can't escape, I'm seeing you. For biometrics, the Xperia 1 Mark V has a side-mounted fingerprint reader built into the power button. The interface of the phone is very close to stock Android 13, but with a few custom features on top. The home screen layout and notification shade are basically as Google intended. The proprietary features include multi-window switch. It's basically two task switchers stacked on top of one another, meant for navigating between and opening apps in split-screen mode. SideSense is another of the in-house Sony features. A handle on the side of the phone opens up a menu of shortcuts to apps and features, most of it customizable. Bravia Core is a Sony video streaming service that you typically find on Bravia TVs, but it's included with the Xperia 1 Mark V with a year of free access. There's an app called Music Pro. It's a paid service that allows you to record singing and instruments and upload it to the cloud for pro-level processing. The Creators app allows easy connection to Sony Alpha cameras. And if you're not familiar, you actually get three separate camera apps on the Xperia 1 phones, Photo Pro, Video Pro, and Cinema Pro. I'll get more into those in a bit. And there's a feature-rich game enhancer, which provides several options for your gaming, 
It can be accessed within a menu or as an in-game overlay. The chipset of the Xperia 1 Mark V is Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It should be both more powerful and more power efficient than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in the previous model. And it also brings support for advanced memory tech like UFS 4.0 and LPDDR5X RAM. In benchmarks, the Xperia 1 Mark V displays excellent scores, which are similar to other flagships packing the same silicon. And there's more than enough power here for intensive tasks such as heavy gaming. Sony claims improvements this year when it comes to thermal management, but the results we found were mixed. In our prolonged stress test, the stability was unimpressive, and we observed significant thermal throttling, like last year. However, the real-world performance seems to be better. We never saw the display's refresh rate throttle down, and the camera overheating warning seemed to be a thing of the past. Just like last year, the Xperia 1 Mark V has a 5,000 mAh battery, but the battery life is even better here, with the phone earning an endurance rating of 115 hours. Charging still maxes out at 30 watts, and there's no charger or cable in the box. With a proper adapter, we were able to charge the phone from 0 to 50% in half an hour. There's also support for wireless charging too. Finally, let's get into the cameras. On the back, there's the new 48 megapixel main cam, a 12 megapixel telephoto that offers stepless zoom between 85 and 125 millimeters, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide cam. Besides the upgraded main cam, the setup is similar to what you'd get on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. Sony's camera apps also haven't changed much since we saw them on the previous model. The default one is Photo Pro, and in its basic mode, you get a zoom selector and several sliders with options for things like aspect ratio, flash, bokeh, and white balance. Clicking on the More button will get you extra features on top of that. And then you can also scroll from the basic mode to the Pro section of this app, which includes a few modes, including auto and manual, and there's a memory recall function too. These get a different looking interface. What's new is that Sony now has new computational processing for nighttime shooting, and you can find a night view mode in the interface. They've also added focus peaking to all of the camera apps, and you can choose among several highlight colors for it. And another new development is that the Photo Pro and Cinema Pro app can switch orientation when you rotate the phone. Cinema Pro gives you much more control over your video recording than Photo Pro. You can create separate video projects here, and you have more settings to play with, including extra choices for the frame rate and resolution. All of the videos from this app come out in a cinematic 21 by 9 aspect ratio. One of Cinema Pro's most useful features is the ability to rack focus between preset focus distances, A and B. You even get control over the duration of the transition. And finally, there is the Video Pro app. Like Cinema Pro, it offers more controls over the regular Photo Pro app, but you have more freedom when it comes to the aspect ratio, and here you also get color presets to choose from. Now there's a new color preset on the Mark V called S Cinetone. It provides a moody look with enhanced skin tones and cinematic color for users who don't want to deal with color grading. Alright, so how do the cameras actually perform? Let's start off with the main cam. It saves 12 megapixel photos due to pixel binning, and the quality is superb. You get abundant detail with mature processing and very natural rendition. The fine, intricate details look great without over sharpening. The colors are true to life, and so is the dynamic range. On some photos, the contrast could be higher though. Maybe due to some HDR processing, the highlights appear pushed down and not as bright as they could be. You can take bokeh style photos too, powered by AI this time around, with no help from a TOF camera. Low light photography is where you see the most benefit from the main cam's new sensor. It's capable of capturing much more light and reducing noise in the meantime. These photos are rich in detail and quite sharp, though again with a nice natural rendition. The color saturation is lovely. You can see blown highlights though, and each photo takes about 4 seconds to capture. The new night view mode can kick in automatically while the mode is enabled, but only if you're shooting in a very dark situation. When it does, it adds an extra couple of seconds to the processing time, and the results are actually a close match to the regular output. It's more like HDR. It offers better highlight retention and sometimes a brighter sky. The video recording from the main cam is nice too. All of the cameras max out at 4K, and the main cam's clips have plenty of detail, and again natural processing. The colors here are more vivid than the stills though, and we've seen crisper videos from competitors. There is a wide dynamic range mode available on all cameras, and it keeps the highlights from clipping and increases the contrast. The trade-off is that when you're shooting in this mode, you don't have electronic stabilization or support for 60fps. In low light, videos from the main camera are usable but nothing impressive. The detail is alright, the noise is tolerable, but the dynamic range is very narrow. 
Now onto the telephoto cam. Just like the previous model, it provides continuous optical zoom within a range from 3.5 times to 5.2 times. This provides a level of versatility that other camera phones need multiple cameras to deliver, and the colors, dynamic range, and noise levels are just as good as the main cams. The trouble is that the detail and sharpness are a bit subpar for the class, and it gets worse the further you zoom in. At 5.2 times, we're pretty sure that a similar level of quality could have been achieved by just cropping and upscaling from a good 3.5 times zoom camera. And this is true pretty much any time you decide to use the higher zoom level. Still, the telephoto's low light performance is decent, and night view mode is available here as well. The colors are well saturated, and the noise reduction is gentle, so there's enough detail, but some visible noise too. During the day, 3.5 times zoom videos are solid, with a good amount of detail, natural rendition, and accurate colors. Low light videos from the telephoto are usable. There's a good amount of detail, true to life colors, and the noise doesn't get in the way. The dynamic range is alright. Then there's the ultra wide, which provides great quality, especially for this sort of camera. There's plenty of detail and excellent sharpness, and you again get a true to life rendition of fine details like foliage. The colors are consistently accurate and dynamic range is good, and there's usually plenty of contrast. Sometimes you do end up with suppressed highlights like on the main cam though. In low light, the ultra wide's photos have a good amount of detail. There's adequate sharpness, and the color saturation is great too. The 4K videos from the ultra-wide camera are superb during the day. They look natural and well-balanced, with plenty of detail, even in the corners, nice colors, and low noise. At night, the ultra-wide's videos are okay, but pretty noisy. Selfies from the 12-megapixel front-facing cam are great. They have plenty of detail, with a nice rendition and good sharpness. Colors are accurate, the exposure is good, and the dynamic range is wide too. The selfie cam shoots great 4K videos, they're detailed and sharp, with natural rendition and accurate colors. There's high contrast, but the dynamic range isn't that impressive. Finally, you get steady shot electronic stabilization across all of the cameras, as long as the wide dynamic range mode is disabled. It does an excellent job of smoothing things out. So that's the Xperia 1 Mark V. It provides you with a familiar Sony flagship experience, including the signature design, tall 4K display, and features like a headphone jack and expandable storage. And not to mention the unique camera hardware and software. The Mark V's new main cam seems to hold its own against the competition. And compared to the previous model, you get better speakers, chipset, and battery life this time around. So overall, it feels like the Xperia 1 Mark V is a solid upgrade, and it deserves a recommendation, especially for Sony fans.